like something different. So what do you think about this Lena instead of an Ember Spirit? Um, Does it do something that makes this all worthwhile? It's, it's well, a setup for Weaver, I guess. Ember Storm are not going to be as good this game just because of the lockdown that DK Bane provide. Like it was, True. it's not a game where you can take advantage of VP's lack of disable because they have plenty of disable and they also have a counter pick. Um, so I think it was just a more stable mid laner that gives them some good burst damage, some good playmaking potential, something that the Ench and the PL don't really provide. Okay, and he's got to outlane a Alchemist, or at least make sure Alchemist doesn't get out of control. And yep. considering that um, Newbie has good lane dominators, if they can win their lanes and push that into uh, map pressure, then yes, Alchemist can get shut down. But considering it's a PL and CM and Line are both kind of squishy, it just doesn't feel super safe to me. Um, but depending on how fast uh, SCCC can get his Yule Scepter, maybe they can mm -hmm. um, end up slowing down no one and making this uh, game go along. Yeah, so I guess the out gives you an answer to the PL this time around since there's no Shaker in the pool. Uh, it is a very different playstyle. The Shaker kind of more that fighting, team fight heavy one, whereas the out is like the carry that can match up well and mm -hmm. deal with the PL. Worst case, he could get the cleave talent at 20, even though the stun one is so... No, it's just the stun is enough to probably kill PL. Yeah, Illusions, so. <laughs> yeah you can um, use that on Illusions themselves. So. But in some ways, they swindled their opponents slightly by picking Dragonite fourth, thinking mm -hmm. uh, this is our mid-hero, and then they end up picking a different mid-hero late, making Pasha play the DK. So... Um, DK matching up in this game, though, doesn't feel amazing against PL unless you get the jump on your opponents, but it does feel pretty good against CM and Line. His HP's high, his armor's high, so killing him's going to be a little, a little bit harder. Kind of feels like he's going to be a little little gimp this game, but if he gets like a hood or something, it'll be fine. Yep. So here we go. Important game for newbie particularly. VP not guaranteed top four, but pretty close to it, which would put them in the winner bracket of the main event. I'm sure they would like a higher seed if possible. And also, you know, all these games, any wins you can get just going to help build up your confidence going to the main event. And VP, definitely a very, I feel like, more so than others, maybe a team that needs to be playing confidently. Um, they're an aggressive team. They're a team that have underperformed historically at the International. And I think that is just not a place they want to be in at where they're kind of going into the main event as like a fourth seed and they had a rough group stage. Mm -hmm. Not un It's not uh, unknown territory for a newbie, though at least so uh, and maybe this is one of their their next solution against the enchanted put a dragon knight in the lane oh. like bloodseeker uh very tanky but in this game he's gonna have a harder time now they did see the observer ward. look at no and taunting all the way and he knows there's an observer ward here this is uh what was kind of cool what they did they put a uh, they basically ran sukuchi weaver mid to place the observer ward, and as a result they got there first mm -hmm. and because of that they ended up seeing the enemies placing their ward first and that was even enchantress running mid that's a fast hero but not as fast as a Tsukuchi Weaver. So he gets a free D ward, he gets a fourth of a level, and he starts off with some really nice gold. Very well done. As the early game start is already looking pretty good for them. We'll see how many bounty runes are going to be. It's going to be two apiece, nothing crazy. And that's, you know, that's part of the course. You're happy with that. If you've got an Alchemist and you get two out of the four bounty runes, that's decent. We saw three out of four yesterday with an Alk team, which was kind of crazy, but that is definitely the outlier so fly out of circlet eventually with a salve uh, once his support stop pog in the courier go <laughs> fast aquila to increase his armor oh, his mana are. region all that good stuff and the supports up they brought out a sentry it looks like uh no one actually bought the sentry and sent it bottom with his early game d ward money okay sent sent them a second follow-up one i guess yeah wants Makes to sense. block the pull camp so and they do uh yep. kaka also has a sentry so he should be able to de ward this if he spots it later but by the time that he does it might be too late for the first pull yep so you can see the three lanes there it is going to be enchantress this time playing in the safe lane not the off lane giving the pl what looks to be a very easy lane for him to farm in up top yeah, the cm supporting especially this is the way to do it because if you if you put a enchantress against this lane that's slightly scary and against heroes that actually aren't that survivable from range damage, then it's going to allow Enchantress to get the best of both worlds. And on the opposite side, then a PL just gets to do whatever the heck he wants against a Dragon Knight. He doesn't care that he can't necessarily out-harass him. He just yep. wants to win the lane really hard. Kaka going to use his sentry for the lane itself. He gets hit by the Bramble Maze, and he's just dead. That damage output, I don't know if he was expecting three heroes there. Roger had been hiding in the trees for some time, and Roger get, then gets the pull as well. So, really good play down bottom. This is, if you're going to aggro a trail like this, you have to use the pull, and... They didn't really want to aggro Trilon and Enchantress. The problem is, you can't really TP rotate your lanes because your opponents will just do the same thing. So you kind of have to commit to these lanes. So VP, not happy with the lane matchups perhaps, but are going to make the best out of it. And because they blocked the small camp, they can't pull uh, on the other side to try to offset this. So as long as VP can get these pulls going, it's going to be a bad time for them. Yep. So a little stun, some damage on Solo here. He's got Tangos and 
brain sap can always flow out as well. Careful about those brambles. Do a lot of damage at level one as KP trying to come back in to get some of these last hits, but a lot of denies going the way of VP with the neutral camp there. Yeah, back on the mid lane, SCCC is doing pretty well, 15 and 3, but no one is still catching farm. 12 last hits for him, yeah. and he's actually going to spot the arcane rune first before the Lena does. SC is going to be, I'm sure, a little disappointed about that. Could yep. have really helped his lane. And he's got the bottle coming out, so I think he was hoping that the two minute rune would still be there for his bottle, but gotcha. not going to be the case. Oh, either way, it's not the best thing for, for no one to have more acid sprays, but... No, it's... So, I'm sure you're not to worried too much about the arcane rune. Stun. Oh, he's got mangoes too. He's going for this kill. It Ooh, looks gets like a stun. He went for a point. This is another dragon slave here. No one. He's going to be very close to going down. The, the right clicks just aren't quite there, but there's a CM. Hello, says Faith. I'll take this one. Ooh, I thought uh, he lost that one because the Observer was losing high ground vision. The mischance helped as well, but great rotation yeah. there by Faith. It's a great timing. I, I mean... By the time I started looking at SCC, he was doing a great job pressuring the Alk, and that's sometimes uh, something that gets lost. You know, you want to be there at the right time, but sometimes you just aren't there. You don't always know when SCC is going to do really well, but that, that lead up to that may be helping Faith rotate over and know it's a good time to gank. And it was definitely good timing for that Courier to come out with the bottle and double mangoes because he was running out of spells, and I think that's why no one thought he was safe because he could see the man on the Lena kind of low, but suddenly there's bottle charges and mangoes, not quite the safe lane you once thought it was. But interestingly, they picked up the unstable concoction level. Very often that's delayed, but I guess against a hero like Lena, it might be nice yeah. to be able to protect yourself. In that moment, he th thought he was going to be able to get a kill, but um, SCCC able to stay alive, and that will slightly limit his gold output. Yeah, I imagine he may have, like you say, been trying to out go for the outplay. Um, you do that surprise thing, and you see Lena going too aggressive, and you get a kill out of it, but... I don't think it's the worst thing. I mean, you're losing basically four gold per last hit. Once you're maxed out, but bottom. Bane kill possibly. He's got yeah, Brain Sap. He does brain get Sap his way out of this one, and KP has a bug on him too, so it's not just Kaka going down. It should be KP as well dying. He Can't lived? Oh my god. Wow. He nightmared himself. Solid things. Oh my god. Triple I thought he was Manga dead. Regen 2. He's sure. still got plenty of mana to play around with. He gets salved up. Boy. I just, man. That's that's Solo, man. He, he knows exactly when it's time to Nightmare. He he's pushed a, that the limit. He's probably the best Bane player out there. I, th I think so too. So how are the other lanes going now? Moogie's at 26 and 8, the Dragonette's at 17. Not too bad actually. Probably helps to see him left the lane and he's also just really hard to kill with all this armor and regen. So, But I think he's going to be pleased with his with his lane setup. He's not super zoned. Back Stun in mid. lands mid. Yep, Sun's going to land. Faith's going to follow it up with a Nova. Wakes up S triple C to get the Dragon Slave for a kill on Solo. Oh, that was really good. Play. Faith uh, broke the Nightmare, is that what happened? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that was he really good. used his spells and then broke it too, so he made sure he got the Nova off. That's a really good play. Back at the top bounty rune, a bit of a fight going between Pasha and Mugi. It's going to be one apiece up top and down bottom, where the actual clash is coming. Kaka stunned up and picked off. Did get the bounty rune, but will pay for it with his life. Yeah. A little costly because he doesn't have boots yet, so delaying that means he's harder to roam, uh, more likely he dies, but because it does channel into uh, preventing out gold on the enemy team, probably worth it. And they're actually setting the pressure and they've got two observer wards, one's blocking small camp, one's spotting him here. He's going to land the stun. He's got his ulti. It's going to be close though. He's not level six though, so he can keep on chasing for this one. Has the movement speed from the fiery souls. No one needs to be careful. Dragon Slate back up and nope, not enough damage here with the raindrops. Yep. SCCC I think thought he had that kill, but guess is wrong with the the LSA now as well, and no one jukes his way to the shrine. Gets not out of there. Well, he did, he did lose ulti, and he's completely out of mana, so probably not the best for SC. But he's yeah, he's he's particularly not happy because no one's able to keep, just keep on farming yeah. with the shrine usage, and he's going to stack up a camp here. Gets a nice little medium camp, another three units. Not the golems that he perhaps wanted, but still good enough. Yeah, and both Down supports basically bottom. trading here. Nightmare into bugs. They think they can kill KP in it. It's not going to be the case, it looks like. KP just right-clicks the bug under the tower. Didn't actually have his heal up, which made it a little bit scary. Hiding over here, but they, they know exactly where he is. Pops his heal now, and it's going to be a little close. It's a brain close. zap. It's, they may just keep on diving this one. Ramses doesn't have much health regen, though, so he has to be careful. They want to keep the siege creep alive, which is what... Probably the main goal is to do some damage to this tower. Ramses so has to be a little bit careful. He'll get a chant here, though. He may break. and now he's going to go more yeah, untouchable. Brain sap. KP just getting chipped away at three points and untouchable. Still being chased here. Soul's got another brain sap soon. Still tower taking damage. That's a big part of this one. 
They kept this siege creep alive a long time. KP gonna get back to safety now and we kept alive. Back at top. Looking like a kill. TP yep, cancelled. Nicely done by Newbie. They get themselves another kill and it's Moogie on the PL having a pretty good start here. 40 CS for the Phantom Lancer. So I, th I think this looks pretty decent for Newbie right now. The Elk isn't out of control. He's actually at the same net worth as the Lina, but he is doing some jungling here. Uh, power treads up as well and uh, how's Lina still sitting in the mid lane? I mean the support's got some easy levels mid while Lina was roaming so Faith has already got three points into Arcane Aura. It's going to be very helpful for an int based hero like Lina and Enchantress actually. So helps them win their lanes. They've got all these levels. They can dive top. Whereas on the other side you got this off lane level 5 Dragonite. What does he do right now? Almost nothing. Yeah, we've seen these, some of these DKs get sacked uh, one in another game by Optic, and it was a similar thing where it just felt like he was playing catch-up for a long time, and it took ages to get a Blink Dagger up, which he could have an impact with. And Well, it's not just DK having a rough time. It's Ramses as well getting very low. Shikuchi keeps him alive, but he's not level 6 yet, so even if he hits it from this creep wave and gets time-lapse, he's still going to be on low health. He needs some kind of regen. There's Moogie chasing the Dark Willow in the trees here. Not going to find him. As he does turn back around, hoping to maybe get a Lance off here. The slow from the Nova gets Moogie close, gets the Lance out. Roger needs to be careful, has a Bramble Maze. He's gonna pop it, but doesn't actually... Oh, there we go. Gets the root afterwards. Moogie gets some backup now. LSA is going to come in from the Lena rotation. Lena's here. S Triple C wants to clean this one up. There is a bug on him, which he gets the focus fire onto, but still very low. One more right click from Ramses is going to bring down Lena. That's a big kill to be taking here. Moogie, it's up to him now. The PL needs to clean up. He has some help from Faith, but that's not going to last all too long. Ramses in full retreat. He's got a triple kill on Moogie. Ramses will be A-OK. -okay. He's not going to succumb to the PL pressure, but all of this while Alchemist farms. They did a good job picking off the Lina there. The bugs are, are so hard to deal with, especially with that much stuff in the area. And you know, Maybe the PL should have covered him a bit better, but just took so much to kill the Dragonite. His, his HP actually was valuable there. I said, what is he going to do? Well, he can just tank a lot of nukes. Yeah. It made it easier to uh, pick off the Lina at that phase. She only had an Aqua, so she's really actually not that survivable right now. But Ramsey's forced to time-lapse at top. A little bit too aggressive there, though he knew what he was doing. He wasn't really in any serious risk of dying. It does waste his time, though. He's got to run all the way back to Fountain, you know. Yep. So didn't get a great trade there. And it's not like, yeah, there's no shrine, uh, there's no jungle, no one's been taking that, but ultimately he wasn't going to really be able to defend this tower on his own anyway. Smoke around through the jungle, it's going to be yep. Crystal Maiden as well as Lina, but Ooh. unless they get the Frostbite, he's going to get knocked out. I think Faith making a bit of a mistake there, popping the Nova then, rather than wrapping around and catching no one as he shifted to the right, so uh, kind, of a, kind of a costly one. And even just the, the Lina not being quite in position to follow it up. Crystal Main still nearby. Faith it may want to block some of these camps. Seen a lot of CMs play this style back at bottom. The Bounty Rune fight. They know there's an Alchemist in the game. And KP wanted to stop the Bounty Runes going his way. But Ramsey's going to be getting both. Thanks to the grip from Solo. So no one still about the same net worth as the PL. I'd say this is a good position for Newbie to be in. Usually you want to be ahead on Alchemist, but... He's uh, prepping his with rune. his invis. Yep, Looking and they got like the damage angle. for this one. Kaka, has he got finger? He just hit level 6. He could level it up. He doesn't need it. Oh, oh he gonna maybe he does. Okay. <laughs> Throws the finger on a 50 health Alk, and I'd say it's hell worth it. Yes, absolutely. You want to make sure you get that kill. That suicide would have been really costly. I mean, he still would have lost gold, which would have been good, but getting the gold on the other side, a little bit of experience, super valuable there. Uh, the line stone was a little delayed, though. Uh, the, the light striker right hits. He, the Alk was able to get some distance out. Yep. Maybe that made a difference, but... Perhaps he was waiting for that nightmare, expecting it to come to like dodge some spells and wanted to like yeah. impale after the nightmare or something. Yeah, I to don't do know. damage that way it breaks and they don't have to like, you know, take it onto yourself or something. Yeah. Bane is often in the right place at the right time. Uh, Solo is very good at that. So, a uh, huge kill, and now PL is sitting a whole 600 gold ahead of where Alk is. So that was a massive pickup in the mid lane, and yep. lucky they got the invis room. Going for a fast diffusal. He's going to play, take the fighting approach. The Battle Fury PL build all but dead at this point. Have not seen that in such a long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, that build was it was just like mechanics broken, essentially. Yeah, Battle Fury got some pretty decent nerfs uh, over time. KP down bottom. Needs to be careful. Curse Crown is there. Doesn't, does uh, go for the heal, which is going to deter Roger from using a Bedlam on him. That was Faith. Uh, somebody started a TP there. I'm not sure who it was, but they canceled. Here come Newbie, though. Smoking in the enemy jungle. They're trying the to keep tabs of this alchemist, but they just can't 
quite get the trajectory right. They'll find Roger instead, which is a nice kill. A better one would be Ramsey's down here. The double siege creep. Seen this before, trying to just push ways with this one. Beetle's being thrown back here, and it looks like the job is up to KP and SCCC to tank this one. They've got no heal for a couple of seconds. KP, yeah, they're going to keep the siege creeps alive. Yeah, no Dioglyph, and KP healing up. He needs to just take the heal himself. Don't share it with those siege creeps. And That's the tower is not going to be claimed, yeah. A little bit more Armus would have been fine. He actually does lose the second one as well, so... Bit of a loss, but still a good grab then. Gonna That's going to be a deadline. Grip on Kaka. Yeah, oh, is it? There's follow-up. There's Mugi there, but the stun hits too. Nicely done by no one as the follow-up from Lina comes. Not in time to save his teammate, and they're looking for more. They really want no one. They dodge the terrorize with a nice little doppelganger. Mugi trying to gun down no one, but with Chemical Rage up, just not possible. And Faith dead as well. Two newbie heroes hit the floor, and it could be a third. Mugi trying to TP out gets caught by a Dragon Tail. He's got a doppelganger in a couple of seconds, but he's not going to get a chance to use it, and... It just gets worse if SCC gets caught and it's a one second sun, that's all you need. It's not even a one second sun, it's the bare minimum. No one knows they've just won a big fight, a key deciding one. SCCC gives him the tip before he goes down. He's a good sport. Man, and so bad for newbie. It looked kind of good because there was a hastering on the Lena. He was wrapping all the way around to try to catch the elk, but that terrorize and the threat of the terrorize made things so hard. If anything, if they just all ate it together, it would have been disengaged, nobody dies, but that overdive, the tier one is still alive, by the way. The overdive there um, proves to lose all of their cores, and it, it, a short moment before that, it look, just looks so good for the spellcasters on newbie side. Yep. Getting a lot of pickoffs. Can he catch Solo down here? Probably not. Um, either way, he does buy out on, uh, on Lina right before his death, so he's got the Yule Scepter ready. So now, solo ganking is going to be more than more than easy to do. We'll see if they keep playing the aggressors. They sure as hell will. They immediately smoke, and I believe that one was under a dire ward in that jungle as Dragonite's going to find a stun initiation with his fresh blink dagger. Kaka in some trouble, completely airballs the stun. He was hoping for the, the Weaver there, but didn't actually have detection. Instead, they'll find Pasha. With the smoke rotation in, they actually had the whole team there, whereas VP were playing elsewhere on the map, which is probably fine for them because Alchemist closing in on his Radiance. So, with detection, I mean, he's got he's got Blink Dagger on um, on the Dragonite at least, so he, he can get in some of these fights, and it's okay to have a little miss here or there, as long yep. as ultimately they're still creating space for the Alk. He's still hitting up his Tri-Camp, and he's still just a, a little bit ahead of the PL, but he's in acceleration territory. Pretty soon, once he finishes Radiance, things will get out of control, so a couple more kills would be useful, or at least Newbie needs to pressure the map in a big way, and they're still kind of just holding their lanes. They've got these two deep wards in one side of the jungle, which are nice because you see the Alk when he's there, and if he's not there, you know that he's over at that tri-camp, which is a very common place to be farming. Problem is they're using all these smokes, so it's quite difficult to gank right now. Kaka down bottom gets found out by a blink stun, blowing up. There's four VP heroes there, so the TP support gets immediately cancelled. They don't want anything to do with it. And the really nice thing about this is VP, every time there's bounty runes there, making sure they get two of them. Yeah. Last time really I think it was up. Optic when uh, they had the Elk. Every single mm -hmm. time bounty runes come up, they got like zero or at yeah. most one of the four bounty runes. Yeah. Uh, that's super detrimental. Really changes your pattern. Now, still only a bit ahead of his opponents on the Elk, but Newbie has grouped up and they're pressuring the top tower. They keep the Siege Creep alive this time. and It's full HP though, so it's going to take some doing here. They're going to try to catch Solo perhaps. Yeah. Ramble, Ramble Maze will stop the chase and even the threat of a Terrorize being able to constantly pump fake it and cancel it is very hard to deal with here. You never quite know when it's going to be coming your way until you see that animation and well, newbie are going to be able to take the tower. Is it denied? Nope. Not timed by Solo. He tempted it though. Faith in Trouble being chased here yeah, by. Pasha's rotating in on the DK from the river. He's going to blink stun here if he can find a good target. But PL himself is actually, they found Pasha I believe. They know he's here. Pasha may need to blink out. He does do so. Back to the Shrine area, we see Faith Kaka so low in health, but with Tranquil Boots on these two, they will be slowly healing back up. Okay, so they get out just fine, but definitely a lot of careful movements there. If they make mistakes, they're going to get collapsed on at the same vein. They want to stay a little bit wide so they can collapse on their mobile opponents. And Net worth is starting to creep out of control. No one hasn't moved from this place on the map in quite a while here. Um, it's queuing up the typical build, Manta style afterwards, and even still, it's going to be a while until no one feels safe in team fights, like BKB territory, basically, because if he is out of position and he gets grabbed, the only save that he has is a terrorize from an ally or a nightmare to possibly 
uh, interrupt the chain yep. stun. So. Heroes like Ench can kind of just sit far away and just deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Lena Lion, the dual finger combo, can do incredible single target burst damage. Well, so. he might set up on SCC here. He's got a grip. Oh, he lands a stun though. That's going to buy him time to run yep. away unless. Oh, he caught, the caught by the Bramble. That's First crown kill. is there, and S Triple C is going to go for the defensive nightmare on Solo. Stops himself taking any additional damage, and nicely done. Big kill for VP. Yeah, I'm not sure why he used the Yules originally on the Lina, but I, I saw him Yules as Solo was TPing in, and that was kind of where he was in a lot of trouble. I think he saw the Solo TP also, perhaps, but yeah, nice kill. Uh, Lina kind of pressuring top, trying to look for a Solo kill, but instead he just dies. VP immediately turn this into an aggressive play down bottom. They're going to run right into KP Solo. Gets the grip off before a heal comes out from the Enchantress. There's a TP from the Crystal far. Maiden. DK, can he get the sign? Goes for the CM instead. They find a new target here. Alk shows up with a nice two-man unstable concoction. Mugi caught in that one, but they don't want to fight this PL. They're fighting under Shrine, and they know just how deadly that can be. In fact, Alchemist could have been in a lot of trouble there, except for a perfect Terrorize, capturing out absolutely everyone, securing the retreat here. No one wants to turn and fight. Gets the unstable concoction. And some help there with a bit of vision and what a save from uh, wow. from, from Roger. And it wasn't just the terrorize, it was also the Bramble Maze. Yep. When he, when the Lena backed up briefly, Kaka's gonna get defend himself a little bit here. He's gotta worry about the bugs. Still so. Okay, potentially. Oh, he wants to play around it. Yeah. Okay. Forces him back. So he lands the terrorize. Down uh, bottom. One second. Yep. Never he never a pause. <laughs> <laughs> Went for the not a hero initially. S Triple C now in full retreat has a shadow amulet. Can they spot him? They can burn him down. It's only a matter Breathe of time. On fire. Maybe. Uh, yeah, S Triple C, you got to do something here. He's going to throw his spells in. Yeah, they know he was melting as PL shows up to the party. No one does have ultimate oh. though, and I don't think PL can fight him. Mugi is so low, he just dies to the Breathe Fire. Nubia just collapsing. Man, they're just punishing. They, they always find SCCC, and yep. they have way, they have more kill. than enough heroes to get these kills, so it's Half just. kill. They're just running him down. Those are a couple crucial mistakes. I mean, the last two or three deaths from SCC has completely changed the tempo of this game. He hasn't found kills. His opponents have found kills. Just a ward vision. There's sentries yep. everywhere, and uh, VP's just in the right spot. This this feels like a game where newbie like last game, even though they lost and it was kind of convincing from VP. I feel like overall newbie played solid Dota. This time around, it's it's a bit sloppier. There's a lot more mistakes, a lot more kind of iffy decision making. Uh, Lena, you know, getting caught solo pushing top and then down bottom. Lena gets caught again, and PL's like, oh, I'm going to run in after Lena's died with you know, in a 1v3 against all this AoE damage and just also loses his life. It just feels yeah. like some really questionable plays based on the fact, you know, they're versing VP, they're just trying too hard to make something happen. Yeah, and maybe he's just feeling a little too confident. I mean, he was, prior to that death, 6-1-1, one, and one, so he's doing very well. Um, he just hasn't hit 15 yet, he doesn't have the health perk, and, and basically getting hit by the Alk stun there. He flew out a little bit earlier than expected. If he double gangs that, then, yeah, maybe he can get a kill out of it, but still a little dangerous. No HP talent, no HP items, and they have quite a bit of AoE. Even, like, Breathe Fire is a great way to reduce the damage output. That puts us back at Bounty Runes. Dark scan. That's, I haven't seen too many teams do that. Scan to see, like, did somebody take the Bounty Rune? If I go over there, am I going to die? And Roger going for the safe play. So, so it looked like uh, VP just got one this time. A bit more acceptable. Yep. Pasha waiting bottom to see if they can get a kill with uh, Dark Willow and whatever he throws out. And maybe could kill KP here. He's got a lot of I need magic damage from the... Dark Willow Bedlam, if you get that insta stun. He's got the talent and the cloak, so also possibly but survival. But Nubia bringing the entire team, so this is a bit of a bait here. Okay. And the second they see the Lena as well, it looks like, yeah, they are going to you know, tuck themselves in. Breathe fire to say, hey, I'm here, but he's actually blink TP'd, so nice little cheeky two. play from DK. Yeah, I like that one. That's good. At least he waited a little bit until his uh, support started TPing first. Yes. <laughs> normally it'll be like, breathe far, haha, I'm safe, guys. <laughs> and then the support, who's they go looking for you and they find your support. Like, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's, that's not cool. That'd be a bad time. Uh, Manta style on Alchemist is online. Yeah, game feels really hard now. Uh, yep. Elk's a full 50% more net worth ahead of where the PL is. Last couple of fights going bad. It's just like the, the scary thing about Elk, you have to take really good fights. You have to win most fights just to stay even with him. And now they're behind. And as soon as he finishes his item afterwards, things get really scary. But he's got Blink now, too, so we're going to see some stuns. He's going to jump in last second and turn some fights. <laughs> Someone wants a ward. No one's just going to Quelling Blade. It gets pinged. I'm about to say, you may not reveal yourself attacking the ward, but when a 
big area of vision on the map gets removed out of nowhere. Yes. Most teams are noticed that. I mean, Faith has nothing else to do, right? Standing in yeah. trees. <laughs> Might as well look at the map. So they'll start off with Roche. The bug is going to get killed pretty quick now. No one yeah. does pull aggro eventually. And yeah, they're getting ready we, to fight. Newbie's like, we got to just go for this. Is We're reversing an Alk team. We're already behind. Let's make a play. KP just going to go running in. We'll get stunned up. Doesn't stun any teammates, at least with the... Uh, Terrorize trying to follow it up. They're going to take the Enchantress down. Immediate buyback here. They're going for more. Though Lena gets jumped on with the BKB on Ramsey. There's just no solution to him. Alchemist is out of control as well. Radiance Manta already up. Roger gets the kill. Enchantress just bought back. I don't think there's much of a fight for her to come back into. And this is with Mugi having a double damage. He just found it then, I believe. Enchantress, well, didn't really buy back into a whole lot of fun. Just PL surviving, who is you know playing around the outskirts of this fight. Is going to find Roger. Nice. A little cheeky kill there. <laughs> Normalin, Normalin, indeed. As VP will secure Roche. So even though, I mean, they were very ahead you know, prior to that team fight, but even still, the the advantage of being on Dire with Bramble Maze feels so strong. Because if if you look at the ramps, it's it's so much about like how the ramps approach the Roche pit. It's just grouped up there. You have to go down a cliff, yeah. down another choke point. And if he drops a Bramble Maze like that, that's like three Brambles on the way to getting inside Roche. So it takes Enchant far longer just to get there. It lets them know that they're coming, and they're going to group around and get terrorized anyways. This is what VP's abusing on the map, and this is why they're picking Dark Willow and why they're sticking to the dire side. All they do is land one stun on the Lina, they get the follow-up stun with the BKB on Weaver, and it's just so easy to win the fight. Yeah, it's even with Moogie, you know, he's dodging some spells, doing what he can, it's... It's nice, it's cute, it's keeping you alive, but at some point, you know, you actually have to address VP and take them down and contest the Roshan, not just play around it. So, Maelstrom on Weaver now. He's um, got the BKB, almost to Lincoln's as well, sitting about 3,000 away. But once he finishes that, I mean, how does Lini even get something done? She's just finishing the Shadow Blade now. Their opponents are getting item solutions already. You can't even solo kill Ramses anymore. It basically have to be lying into a Lina combo, mm -hmm. and Lina felt so good for like 14 minutes. But the, all those deaths on SCC have just yeah. really hurt him. That's what we've seen with Lina a bit in general. It's just there's this fall off once you kind of get to this mid game until you get like some of those defensive items, like a BKB. You're very squishy. If you ever get gone in as Lina, you're just you're done for. And Lina, despite that, has done pretty well this turn. I was looking at some of the win rates. Was sitting around that like 70% win rate over like 18, 20 games or so. But yeah. this is a good example of how to take advantage of Lina's weaknesses. So pushing through the mid lane for VP with the Aegis up. Alchemist is poor, which means he's got something coming. It's a BKB. Well, there we go. Yeah, you recognize magic damage is the, the big problem in that when out gets BKB. Yeah. Stun on the ground, crossed by follow-up, ulti. Yeah, that was very close. Yeah. If he pops BKB there before going for time-lapse, he lives 100%. So maybe a mistake there. Okay. PL on the other side, though, similar story. Gets caught out, gets brought down. He was going for bounty runes and gets punished. You definitely take that trade, though. <laughs> oh, Dark Willow died bottom. Okay, there's, there's deaths all over. Every single bounty room was... There's a hero who just went for it alone and died. Every time three of I, the four. Every time I hide the recap, I press show yep. fight recap again. It's another kill. Yep. Just uh, open and close. So uh, Crystal Mania did get the, the big Weaver kill, though. A bit of a downside, perhaps. And that yep. most likely going to channel it towards... Uh, maybe a Glimmer Cape would be really effective, obviously. But in some ways, I'd prefer it's on Lina. Give him a BKB. That way, he doesn't have to worry as much about a Blink Stun from Dragonite, perhaps. Yep. There's so many BKBs. Bottom lane, VP setting up to defend solo. That's the grip ready from the trees, but... Didn't have the teammates coming in in time as Alchemist will just leave his illusions to push the top lane. So a little bit of a drum fan these days, it seems like. Yeah. He's, BP, he's an aura BKBs. fan. You know, you, teams stop picking these off lanes to get all the aura items, so maybe it's a support job again. Yeah. And Mid lane, channeling stun. No one gets the stun off. Can't destroy that one, Kaka. Some good reactions, but no one does not want to chase. Still very hard to take fights against VP with all the BKBs that they have. But Hex is definitely one good way that they have. And Kaka's usually putting his player in a, and his hero in the right place at the right time. But it's so hard when... Like, Lion is such a, a surgical hero, you know? It's like, you have really good disables on paper, but you're very vulnerable. You have to be in the right place. And it's not easy to just instantly win a fight, you know? You're never... It's almost never going to get, like, a lineup Earth Spikes. You're still kind of a single target hero. And AoE is just a lot stronger. 
Back at the mid lane, Alk with a DD rune is taking a tier 2 tower. Not much to be said about that one from the newbie side. And going to be going for a bit more here. He's still got 50 seconds left on this Aegis. Blink in the stun onto KP. They sh might be able to burst him down. They should be. Follow up stun coming onto Faith in the Crystal Main. They leave him to the DK. And it's actually the Radiance finishing while forcing out a buyback on the CM. No buyback for KP. It's in fact, he bought back earlier, so it's a very it's long a respawn. Yep, Terrorize going flying through, catches out to both supports in all sorts of trouble. CM's freezing field gets cancelled thanks to it, and Kaka dead as well. Deep inside his base, being chased down. Absolutely no escape. The base of Newbie is melting piece they, by piece. So they're so good how they yep. do everything. They kill the two two tower, they instantly pop a drum charge thinking like, we're going to get to this Rax like a second or two earlier than they expect, and they instantly blink forward, dropping a stun. They had BKBs ready, they had Dragonite who's super tanky, and it just starts the team fight in a place that Newbie wasn't expecting. And that's why they rolled them over. And all of a sudden the game is over. I mean, they had a huge advantage, they were likely to win, but even little stuff like that, that they're pushing against their opponents, that they're not expecting to play against, and that's the kind of stuff that is like, oh, we want to team fight the game yeah. ends, instead of like a, uh, it kind of went even, we got to play safe now. Seen this from Newbie, they, not a team to GG out, and I mean, that's really every team here at TI. I mean, some other tournaments throughout the year, it's like, okay, you know, games probably over, let's GG out. But come TI, you play to that bitter end. Yeah. And, and the one thing no one, our MVP does so well, though, is they, they play it a little safe still. They're, they're doing yeah. great moves. They're all on the same page, but they're not taking any gambles here. And I that's historically been VP's downfall sometimes is their over-aggression. Yeah. So they're addressing it. I 100% could have seen them just sticking there, killing the tower, and then continuing the siege. But so much easier. Take the advantage. We almost killed the tower. Split push it again. Reset. We're not going to make mistakes. We're better than these guys. And then go for the next fight. That's got to be how they're thinking. Very disciplined play coming out from VP. One of the tournament favorites, but a team who has had some TI woes in past years. And majors. Until recently, that yep. is. But the, the prior major system always yes. looked like the team to win the majors would have some disappointing losses here and there. Yeah. But not in the last year. They're the, the biggest major winners at this point in time. In the last couple of months, they've really just been showing everybody they're one of the best. Yes. And they've kind of gotten past that first hurdle with the majors, and now it's like, okay, can they do it with TI? Because they had a disappointing result last year when they were probably one of the, on paper, top two, top three teams coming in. and. Mm -hmm. This year, similar story. They're coming in as a probably a top two team next next to Liquid, and people have high expectations of them, particularly considering the rest of the CIS region and how much it's underperformed. All right, here comes the smoke for Virtus Pro here. The creep wave top is pushed out a bit, but they can use illusions to deal with that at least. And in the meantime, is this a oh. defensive smoke for for newbie? They like <laughs> smoked get it out. across the map. <laughs> yeah. Alk has just hit level 20 and has Octarine, so he's got that 6 second cooldown stun that does an insane amount. 800 max damage. You don't even have to channel it and you do like a 400 damage stun. It's going to start his channel. He's going for the yep. PL group. He does get Catches it. Catches him right away. There's going to be a fall. Terrorize, no doppelganger for you. There's a second stun. That's the cooldown reduction. The Octarine with that level 10 talent decimates Moogie's PL. He does not have buyback, and they're going to make a beeline for this bottom lane, I can only imagine. Faith pokes his nose out, needs to be careful. S triple C as well, invis up, luckily. No creep wave. They're going to push the creeps in mid, it looks like, and then access bottom lane thanks to that. And just once again, Terra is showing his power. One stun Solo. on the right guy. He's just going in behind the tower. He's not going to get burst. He's got Nightmare. Does have the Finger of Death come out as well. He's still alive somehow, but not for much longer. But the rest of his team should be able to clean up this fight. BKB on the Lina. Going to at least give them some fighting options. But VP have BKBs of their own. Enchantress buys back. As does the Bane. And VP going to get to work on the racks here. Not sure there's much newbie can do to defend. They're going to give it their all, though. No one does still have his BKB, so if he wants to jump oh, yeah. in, or if there's a big fight, he can still use it. But Kaka trying to slow things down is reducing damage. of Pasha jumping forward. Finds the lion. That should be enough to clear him out. Actually, they're going to ignore the lion, go for the bigger yep. fish. It's KP who just bought back an SCCC, who they know can't buy back thanks to his BKB purchase. And GG is called 31 minutes. Another one-sided game. This one yes. more so than the last. Yeah, it really was. Uh, makes a lot of sense why they ended up banning out the, the no one uh, alchemist in the second phase in the prior match. It seriously kind of changed the whole game. And, and I'd argue probably put Newbie in a place where they felt like they had to force something. And that's when you start seeing amazing players like SCCC make mistakes. Knowing like, yep. 